Valley Conservation Commission. The meeting is hereby called to order under the authority of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, Town of Raleigh Wetlands Protection Bylaw, Stormwater Management and Erosion Control Bylaw. Notice is given that both a video and audio recording be made of this meeting. The agent will now call the roll for attendance. Arthur Page. Here. Yeah. Kurt Turner. Here. Bob Garner. Here. Judy Keyes. Here. Dan Shinnick. Here. Samuel Strife. Here. Howard Vogel is absent. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum present. Excellent. That brings us to our first administrative item, 730, which is going to be payroll and or vendor bills. And we're going to move right along. Okay, that's fine. Save mm -hmm. money. <laughs> well, it isn't that much save money. It's just that there are any. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, hey, are you a federal employee? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Five points of interest. Right there. <laughs> All right, we have minutes for three meetings. We have the January 2nd, 2019. June 21st, 2011, and July 12th, 2011. We'll do those one at a time. Everybody have a chance to look at the January 2nd, 2019. Yes, and we, just a second. We all have little adjustments on these things. Um, on page two, under the permission to enter discussion, uh, the sentence there, um, Commissioner Turner jogged our memories and had us insert after the word until the following words and as built plan is submitted and approved, comma, and continues on the certificate of compliance. Uh, completion with, slash completion was issued by wording of a condition included in the order of conditions that would survive beyond the expiration of the order of conditions. That slight addition was made to the document. Anybody have any questions or anything in regards to that addition? Okay. Was added to that no. clarification? Do I have a motion to accept those minutes? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. The next is the June 21st, 2011. <coughs> Anybody have a chance to look at the electronic? I believe we also have some requested edits in this document, too. <clears throat> At the bottom of page two of four in the uh, paragraph, continued abbreviated notice of resource area delineation for land off Daniels Road, map nine, parcel 23, the Hopkins Beach Yard and Trust, the <coughs> Hopkins Trustee. We had a superfluous sentence there. We deleted send letter about payment of consulting fee that appeared to be a duplicate of a sentence that appeared uh, just prior to that. And then on page three of four, uh, slight grammatical correction in the exact center of the page under 14 Central Street Maker. In regards to the motion, we said Garner moved to send a return to compliance letter. Keyes seconded the motion, and the motion passed unanimously. So there was that slight change. And then under discussions for 239 Main Street, Brad Street Farm, open space land. <clears throat> Uh, in the sentence, the, the sentence now reads, Agent Bazelak provided a request to Hay on the Bradstreet Farm open space land and asked that the commission, we deleted the word to, kept the word consider, deleted the word on, so that it reads, commission, consider, <coughs> voting to allow the work. Uh, the sentence now ends. And finally, on page four of four, the very first Sentence says Turner wanted, and we corrected it to the record to reflect the work of Chairman Doug Watson had done to facilitate the meetings with the Water Department to bring this matter to a close. Mm. Mm. Anybody <coughs> agree with those as presented? We have a motion to accept those. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the last and final is the July 12th, 2011.
on page one of three, uh, three quarters of the way down, uh, where we have a, the next to the last paragraph starts turn or move. Uh, we put a clarification in here. Uh, the selectman, selectman's decision of June 20th, 2011, a parenthetical uh, sentence granting permission for activity on municipal property in the parentheses, explaining what the selectman's was. On page two of three, uh, top of the page, new request for a certificate of compliance in the motion paragraph. <clears throat> Turn or move, we've deleted to close the public hearing and uh, to issue a complete certificate of compliance incorporating ongoing conditions. Key seconded the motion and the motion passed unanimously. Certificate of compliance requests are not public hearings. They are administrative and they uh, are only required to be conducted during a public <coughs> meeting. They are not a public hearing. That's why okay. we don't do any legal Great. announcements or anything else like that. Just to let you know. So that uh, same uh, correction was done in the next one, new request for a certificate of compliance, to 165 of the report turnpike. Uh, Delmonico moved. Again, we deleted to close the public hearing and that has been white struck uh, <coughs> to issue a certificate of compliance declaring the order invalid and stating that work on the project never commenced. That's how the sentence now reads. And at the <coughs> bottom of the page, enforcement status under 73 Saunders Lane. Uh, we added a few words to make uh, the following sentence uh, read uh, better. And so Agent Bazelak advised there had been no action on the enforcement order issued for the site despite Mr. Bernardo's attendance at a previous meeting and agreement to bring the site into compliance period. And finally, <coughs> page three of three. Again, um, the first paragraph, 155 Newburyport Turnpike, in order to um, add some clarity to what was being stated, the following has been inserted, so I'm just going to read it, and I think you'll, you'll see why it makes sense now. Agent Bazelak advised that two sample evaluations had already been completed, and a tiny presence of arsenic was detected, period. It has been recommended that the site be reported to the Department of Environmental Protection requesting a determination as to if the arsenic is naturally occurring, period. A response from the Bureau of Waste Site Cleanup is anticipated. Okay. We didn't have the stuff about the arsenic in there, so it was kind of clear <coughs> as to why we would be waiting for something from the Bureau of Waste Site Cleanup. <coughs> right. Everybody agree with that as the changes have made? Mm -hmm. Do I hear a motion to accept it? So mm -hmm. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Approved. All right. The next item we have is the collection and acknowledgement of receipts of forms for the summary of the conflict of interest law for the municipal employees, which I believe we all have. On to us. If you didn't happen to bring a receipt with you or do have blank receipts, you could fill out um, to acknowledge that you have been given the communication.
And please complete the online training if you need to come in and utilize a computer in the office. Please contact me. So <coughs> range if, if that's a limiting factor. If not, it should allow you to produce a uh, PDF of your certificate for completing it, which you can then email in at your convenience. Please email it to this office so that I can keep things checked off and turn it into the clerk, town clerk. Thank you very much. The next item, which I don't know if you people have had a chance to look at, and I thought it was an excellent job, is a review for the 2018 annual report. Uh, I thought it was done an excellent morning. Thank you. And we did um, have uh, suggestions, so there has been a grammatical correction on uh, the second page in the second paragraph. At the end of the second paragraph, we had to correct um, which has, needed to be which have, and then it added the uh, <coughs> following sentence at the suggestion of Commissioner Turner. This past year <coughs> saw increased cooperation with the Northeast District 3 State Forester in reviewing forest cutting plans on local properties. Excellent. Now, should we vote on that? Um, yeah, if, um, yes. Yeah. All right. Everybody had a chance to read that. Um, any questions, problems? Uh, anything? If not, do you accept it as presented? I will move that. A second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> it's approved. Turn it into the Softman's office. <coughs> the inclusion in the report. It will be in the town report on the, whenever that gets published. But yeah, it's, it's, it's early. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> right, right. It's just, yeah. This is one of the things they try to get done. Prior to it, so it's out of the way and not involved when we have to do all the budgeting and stuff. All right, the next item in the administrative is the conservation restriction at Dodge Reservation 390 Weathersfield Street, map 18, parcel lot 7, Essex County Greenbelt Association, and Tyler Rally. Yes, um, if I may, I'd like to Please. make a recommendation uh, that. Uh, Town Council and, and myself, as well as uh, EEA and Essex County Greenbelt, have all approved a finalized version mm -hmm. of the document, which we find acceptable and uh, respectable of uh, the town's interests in the Dodge Reservation, as well as uh, in uh, Greenbelt's interest in being able to monitor and uh, be the third party making sure that <clears throat> all natural resources and et cetera are protected on the property. They have uh, started their uh, reconnaissance on the ground for the baseline report that they will be preparing uh, that will accompany the CR. Uh, so therefore, if it's um, acceptable to the commission, I am making a recommendation for the commission to uh, make a motion and, and sign its acceptance of the CR. And then, and then the process is I will request to go before the selectmen and present it to them. Greenbelt has already signed off. All right. <clears throat> if I remember correctly, you said that uh, Greenbelt went over the points of conflict of last month and agreed to the, revise it to what we had said it was yes, supposed yes. to be. Okay. Yeah, there was a little a little hiccup in yep. the editing, but it all got straightened out. All for the good. <coughs> all right. Do I hear such a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Therefore, if you start the office and sign.
Thank you very much. Section 40, as amended, the Town of Raleigh Wetland Protection Bylaw, a public meeting will be held on Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019, at 7.45 p.m., Room 5, Town Hall, Annex 39 Central Street, to consider the request for the determination of applicability for an application filed by John P. and Don M. McCarthy for the proposed installation of a subsurface sewage disposal system, possibly within 200-foot riverfront area of Mill River, at 29 Glen Street, Map 21, Parcel Lot 19 in Raleigh, Mass. You have the floor. Thank you. Tom Mineta from Thomas Mineta Incorporated, representing the McCarthy's tonight, 29 Glen Street. Uh, we're here for a septic repair. Um, in this colored plan here, the, the gray is the house, the uh, yellow is a 200 foot setback from the riverfront, which is shown here in, in a light blue. Uh, the green is the proposed septic system. Um, so the area in the riverfront is, is right here between the yellow and this brown line, which is our erosion control. Um, so we will be installing the sewer line from the dwelling to the um, septic tank and the septic tank to uh, a pump chamber and then a two inch force main to the system. Um, and it's, it's all within an established lawn, so there's no tree clearing, uh, no grading changes. To the site. Did you get the variances <coughs> on the lot lines? Yes. Now that's where you originally had hoped to get it, right? Yeah, yeah. We did some test fits here first. Yep. Um, they just the material wasn't <coughs> that good. It was a little slower, so we would have actually been ended up grading in the um, riverfront. So we ended up uh, perking over in here, and, and the material was better. It perked better, and we had more room. So. Is it pretty flat? Yeah, we're going to have to do some more filling in here. Okay. Uh, it's actually a little dip, so we actually want to fill it up so that we can get the water to, to go around the system. But, yeah, it lays out pretty well. We are hoping to get gravity, but it just wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Dip is going in the opposite direction. Yes. <laughs> away yeah. from right. the away river, from, yeah. river front. And Perfect. The, right. uh, forested, forested river front. And I did prepare a memo. The commission uh, should have uh, yeah. a memo in front of them. <clears throat> I did, yep, I read it. Yep. You got to notify Butters for all this? No, oh. this is an RDA. That means was... you're going to come before us with a notice of intent? Nope. <clears throat> if you could access my memo, either that or I'll be glad to read it for you. It gives no, an ex gonna... explanation as to why. Okay. <clears throat> And you're familiar with the eight things that he's lifted on you. Yes. Yep. No problem on any of those. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. If there's any questions from any of the board members or anybody from the audience in regards to this? I have another question. <laughs> sure. <laughs> with regard to the, uh, the Board of Health, do you have to notify about us for that? We do not. The state requirement is 10 feet, the town is 30 feet, so it's a local bylaw that they, they can waive on a repair. Mm -hmm. So if we're within five feet of the property line, we would have to notify the abutters. And the, the abutters of this, this property is actually um, Governor Dummer, so there's no adverse effect to their property at all. I mean, we're not even grading the other lot line. Well, that's, so that's, what stream was, is that? that's what I was wondering about. <laughs> What's that? What stream is that? Oh, here? Yeah. That's the middle this river. This is the middle oh, that's river. A, okay, yeah. that's a, yeah. Yeah. Right. That's the down middle past river. the middle. Okay. Correct. Yep. Well, I just, and, and again, I'll, I'll go, this isn't 
you know, 100% uh, germane, but then again, it's, it's just a reflection about how uh, the differences in terrain uh, can come up with very different expressions in your regulated resource areas. And I just, I just thought uh, for uh, purposes of just kind of showing the commission, well, let's see, like this way here. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Normally, the bank of the Mill River does not look anything at all like this. It normally has um, <coughs> low topography, extensive emergent freshwater marsh, uh, floodplain area that's usually being uh, actively uh, harvested by beavers and, and flooded and stuff. In this particular instance, there's really, because of the very steepness and the particular material on the bank and the hydrology, there is no bordering vegetated wetlands adjacent to the bank here. And it, the trees are reaching maximum age, which is going to be in another 10 years, can be very curious as to what yeah, happens. Yeah, but, but this is very good. So this is actually gives you a, a very good example of what the structure of a healthy forest is with down woody debris. That debris helps stabilize the bank. It helps slow down the floodwaters and provides uh, numerous habitat values that can be utilized by fish going up uh, the stream. Of course, upstream they run into the Glen Street Dam, but <clears throat> down on this portion, which is tidally influenced also, um, you know, there's a lot of habitat there, both in the water and on the bank, as well as that, that structure that is actually providing st stability and anchoring the bank. And again, another good example of tree root systems, living root systems, that provide a great anchoring mechanism uh, for uh, what would normally be uh, relatively unstable uh, glacial type materials and stuff that would uh, be very erodible. So, um, so I, just, I just wanted to show a couple pictures of that just because I thought it was interesting. It's not, not every day that I go onto a site exactly like this and you have this type of an expression of the bank. And that's the opposite side of the river where you have exactly the opposite going down, where you have maintained lawn coming up. Not all outside. Time. Not yeah. outside. <laughs> Not outside. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so just a bit of this. So if the commission um, is amenable, uh, make a recommendation for consideration of uh, negative option number three, uh, determination of applicability with the uh, special conditions that, that have been noted mm -hmm. and reviewed above, and, as well as the statement, uh, like I explained in the memo, that riverfront regulations actually have uh, consideration for Title V compliance, mm -hmm. and the Commission is really just regulating the activities, the excavation and the grading <laughs> that goes along with installation. And in this particular situation, we just have two subsurface tanks, the pump chamber, and, and the tank uh, for the D box, right? Septic tank. Septic tank. Yep. And, and the piping, as well as the system needs to be abandoned so that it's in almost exactly the same place and that's been previously maintained lawn. Right. So there is no <coughs> detri detriment to the river <coughs> uh, for the proposed activity. If anything, you're achieving better environmental protection because it's actually moving the field further away from the riverfront areas. Can I hear some motion? <coughs> so moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Thank you. When are you going to do that, Tom? As soon as possible. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 The contract has already been hired, so.
It just brings us to our 8 o'clock item. Yes. Yes. Um, I have a question before we open this next item, which is the uh, one scheduled for 8, 8. No, uh, eight. 8 o'clock. Uh, the application is for 49 and 41 in the lane, and yet the replacement roadway goes on to another lot. Uh, the application also includes land off of Emory Lane, which is map 9, parcel 23. Oh, is that the Which is lot? the back, which is the quote-unquote back land owned by the Tompkins 24, 24, Trust. Yeah. Okay. yeah, there's actually three three parcels involved in this file. Are the fees calculated for all three parcels, or is that two? Well, we don't have a per lot fee. Um, the fee is calculated on the activities. And as we move into a discussion um, on the proposed activities for this proposal, there may uh, possibly be uh, some modification to what has initially uh, been submitted. Uh, but right at this point in time, uh, my initial review um, ap appeared to uh, be in agreement with the uh, fees that, that were calculated and, and submitted. Okay, I just wanted to raise that issue. It wasn't, wasn't clear to me that the other, the other lot was included. Yeah, it's, it's, di it's difficult when you have these parcels that have absolutely no street address or whatever, but uh, we did um, the phrasing of the legal notice uh, was supposed to be. Uh, did you get that back? Oh, you haven't even read I it. I haven't yet. even read it. May I just look at that just you to make sure that met. I'm pretty sure we made. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I I believe as as Art reads this when he gets to the end, you'll see that those three <coughs> parcels are all called out. All right, this is the 8 o'clock item, and it is a legal notice, Raleigh Conservation <coughs> Commission, in accordance with the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40, as amended in the Town of Raleigh Wetlands Protection Bylaw. Public hearing will be held on Tuesday, January 22, 2019, 8 p.m., Room 5, Town Hall, Annex 39 Central Street, to consider a notice of intent application filed by Bruce Tompkins, trustee of the Tompkins DeJardis Trust, for proposed construction of a single-family residence Relocation of Woods Road, possibly within a 100-foot buffer zone bordering vegetated wetlands, a 100-foot buffer zone <coughs> of isolated vege vegetated wetland, intermittent stream, bank, and land under waterway at the at land off of Daniel Road, <coughs> Map 9, Parcel 23, at 49 <coughs> Emily Lane, Map 9, Parcel 23, and Lot 24, and 41 Emily Lane, Map 9, parcel 23, lot 25 in Raleigh, Mass. Gentlemen, who have the floor? Good morning. Uh, yes, good evening, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the Commission. My name is James DeCoolis. I'm John's long lost son. And uh, I have uh, a amended uh, application or amended uh, set of plans that I'd like to submit uh, with a cover letter. Um, and what these are are revisions to the sheets C1 and C2 that were submitted with the Notice of Intent application. Um, just to address Mr. Turner's uh, uh, initial comments, um, as Brent, Brent mentioned, uh, these lots, because they're uh, this one particular woods lot, which is 152 acres in size, is so large it doesn't even have a parcel number. It's just referred to on the uh, Assessor maps as uh, uh, map nine, block twenty-three. Uh, so it's it's actually referred. I'm referring to it as lot zero because it doesn't have a parcel number. But the other two parcels, which do abut and front along Emily Lane, are parcels twenty-four and twenty-five. Um, would it be helpful, Brent, to lay out the amended site plan, or just to work off the? Uh, Green. Well, it's, it's whatever you're familiar with. I did want to ask you, uh, this is also when usually a representative turns in the notifications of the butters. Yep. Uh, just so we can make sure that the butters were notified. 
pages. I'm not sure all the cards are here. I think we've got like, uh, there were 28, and I think we've got about 25 returns. Are those abutters include the Moran, um, the Moran property? Uh, I can double check on that. We had a certified abutters list from the assessor's office. And I'll check that if you look. This is the, does everyone have the list? Well, I don't know who owns that property now that's going to be developed into the Moran property on Weathersfield Street you're referring to? Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe they, they were on the list. Yes, Cheryl Moran and, and yes. Patricia Simon, they were Thank notified. You. Yep. So, um, as I mentioned uh, in the cover, I don't know, how many did you count, Brent? I wasn't counting. Oh, okay. I was looking for that particular okay. person to make sure that they, they, had, they, they had responded. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, as I mentioned uh, in the cover letter with the application, uh, this is uh, you might want to look at this as a two-phase project. The first thing that we're doing is we're uh, we're actually dealing with an existing Woods Road that goes through Lot 14A. Oh, thank you, Brent. We can, we can do a, a sheet what, what on, would the, on the table. Would the commission What's, prefer the uh, screen or the table? He's got color. I like the color. Um, okay. That way it's easy to keep track of. Uh, my okay. man. Well, now, this is, isn't the revised version. He just... Oh. He just yeah, this afternoon was just... This is the revised uh, All right, plan we'll from this afternoon. That now, unless anybody can play. Okay. okay. Um, so, what we have here is... Um, an existing woods road that goes through lot 14A and it uh, goes to the back lot, that woods lot, that 152 acre lot. That existing road starts here on Emily Lane and goes along the right sideline of 14A and then extends <coughs> into the large 152 acre parcel. Uh, there's a stream crossing here that was permitted under a prior order of conditions that the Conservation Commission issued in what, 2010, Greg? No, I no think 2005, I think. 2005. So um, later on in this evening, you'll be hearing a request for a certificate of compliance uh, for the completion of the work related to that project. But what we're looking to do here, the first part of this project, is actually uh, abandon this woods road here and restore it to its native condition. And uh, currently there are four... Uh, What's the diameter of the reinforced 18. concrete pipes? Four 18-inch reinforced concrete pipes that handle the intermittent stream as it flows from the pond, from this dammed pond, and it flows underneath this woods road down towards the golf course. Um, what we're proposing to do is to remove those, uh, completely restore the stream bed, restore the woods road back to its native condition, and relocate that road off to the northwesterly side of lot 12, and then it extends for a brief moment into the big woods lot. So the, the boundary of the woods lot actually runs along this boundary here that I'm laying out. This is the, the perimeter of the large 152 acre parcel. So the road that we're proposing to relocate from the southerly portion of 14A to the northerly portion of Lot 12 will come off of Emily Lane, uh, slightly um, bend onto the large 152 acre parcel, then come back onto Lot 12, and then cross the stream with what we call a log stringer bridge, and then ultimately reconnect with the Woods Road that goes into the large 152 acre parcel. Now what we're proposing to do is to uh, make a significant improvement and the impact to the wetland resource areas. There's a new table that we provided that Brent had requested. And on that table, you'll see here that um, there are wetland fill. Um, as a matter of fact, let me lay out the plan too so you can see it here if you want to get a closer look. <coughs> So what we're proposing to do is to uh, completely restore, so the wetland resource area is this dark hatch line with the black dots. 
This is the wetland resource boundary under the Wetlands Protection Act. This is the, the westerly side of the, the intermittent stream, and then this is the easterly side. So what we're proposing to do is to abandon this road and completely eliminate the impact on the wetland resource areas right in this area here where the existing road is. So right now as it stands, there's uh, 613 square feet of impact, which is right here, 613 feet of, uh, square feet of uh, wetland resource area impact. And what we're going to do is move that crossing over to here with the Log Stringer Bridge. And the proposed impact, impact to the resource area will be 151 square feet. So we're reducing the uh, wetland resource area impact by 462 square feet. The other thing we're doing is we're completely restoring the stream bed. Uh, right now there's about 184 square feet of stream bed impact. <coughs> and we're minimizing that. We're reducing it completely down to zero. Uh, the other amendment uh, revision that took place, and the revisions are noted up here in the revision <coughs> box, the other revision that took place was the hatching of the 25-foot no disturb zone on the plan, which was not on the original application. So you can see this hatch along both sides <coughs> of the boundary. Along, not just, so what we have here are two resource areas. We have a resource area under the Wetlands Protection Act, which I previously identified up in this area to the north to the east of lots 12 and 14A along their boundary. And then we have a local resource area uh, that was delineated on lots 12 and 14. They're identified here along the westerly side of lots 12 and 14A. So we've shown the 25 foot impact, uh, no impact uh, buffer area along that local resource area boundary. Um, so after that, so the, again, the first phase is the relocation of this road over to the northerly side of Lot 12. The second phase of the project involves constructing a new single-family home with a proposed four-bedroom septic system and uh, a portion of that septic, septic system, the leaching area, which is a Presby leaching field, a portion of that will be within the 25-foot uh, no-impact buffer zone to the local resource area. And what we're proposing to do is to provide compensatory 25-foot no disturb zones in two areas. Uh, the first is the northwesterly corner or the westerly corner of Lot 12 along Emily Lane. And the second compensatory area is on the large 152-acre parcel on the northerly, the northeasterly side of Lot 12A. So the total uh, compensatory 25-foot no disturb area as shown on here is 4,212 uh, 4, square feet. What we're doing is um, we're basically going from 870 square feet of current uh, impact to the 25 foot no disturb zone. And we're actually um, providing an additional, we're eliminating that and through these two compensatory zones we're actually providing a positive, uh, an additional compensatory no, uh, zones of, 800, of 721 square feet. So the house uh, will be within um, 100 feet. It'll be within the 100 foot buffer zone to the State Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, we're showing a setback distance of 51 feet from the BBW line. And we are showing a porch that will be uh, set on pylons. Uh, with 39 foot setback distance to the BVW. Again, this road will be abandoned and restored to native conditions, so this, this actually becomes a backyard area for the new house. We have erosion control surrounding the proposed work for the house. And uh, the, is the garage on the, uh, entering from the front right or? <coughs> on the right side, front entrance garage on the right side. Right over there. Oh, that's right, right here. Okay, so the two-car garage we have is uh, on the right or the southerly side of the house. The ent well, I'm confused now. The entrance is... <coughs> the entrance to the house? <coughs> well, the entrance to the garage is exactly where? Right there. Because I thought John was Woods saying... Road is. On the east. Uh, 
over on this side? That's that's what I thought. That's that's not the entrance. No, no. This is a, a pretty steep knoll. Well, this is a knoll right here. This is okay. the peak, the top of the knoll. So what we're doing is we're actually cutting back the knoll. You can see the proposed contour lines. So uh, the entrance is just going to be along the front, uh, north or south westerly side of the house. Okay. Now you say there's going to be a deck on the back. Yes. That that doesn't show on your plan, though, right? No, it does. Yeah. You can just see the outline of it. Oh, okay. Really tight. <coughs> Thank you. Now, what is the purpose for this new road you're going to com be constructing? Uh, uh, the Tompkins and the Jardins, uh, Bruce and uh, Stephanie, they want to maintain access. They don't have any access to the 152-acre parcel right now, right? right? Yeah, there's there's no access back there. So um, w they just want to maintain access. I mean, they have been using it for is it Chapter 61 or 68. But they were using another access when they did that. I don't believe so. Is there another access? access? Yeah. yeah, the most recent yeah. harvesting plan, they did utilize as, uh, access over from the Moran property from oh, okay. 30 Weathersfield Street. Okay. <clears throat> but that must have been a further time. further back, um, probably another maybe 10 or 15 years prior to that, when that crossing was put in as a temporary crossing, it was to support uh, forestry harvesting <coughs> operations that were conducted out back there, and, and this was. Uh, the access for that particular um, round of uh, harvesting that went on. Well, uh, you, uh, have you been presented with an application yet for the Moran project? No. We've Not had, we've had uh, ORAD. You're aware of what's going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, there will be, uh, they're going to, Mr. Tompkins and, and Ms. Just, this jar, they're not going to have access once that happens, right? I mean, this, this would be their only access for logging operations for the 152-acre parcel. I'm not so sure you're no, going to say zoning, that. No, zoning doesn't require them. They have to, uh, that OSRD project will be providing uh, access potential yes. potential right of, right of ways, yes, ac access ways. They have to, the zoning regulations require it. They can't isolate um, backland, not under the current zoning. Okay. And that leads to a question I have is, uh, what's the width of this Woods Road that you're um, putting in <clears throat> ten feet. There's either ten or twelve. I'll, I'll take it back. It could be twelve feet. Yeah. Was well, that conformed to a, if that, if that, if that access point is going to wind up at some point, leading into a development that will probably eventually link into the development on the Moran property? Is that is the width of that woods road sufficient to accommodate a roadway that would meet town standards? No. No, absolutely not. And uh, would we be willing to sign off on, uh, I mean, we'd be willing to sign off as a condition that it would never be used for that. I mean, this is just for temporary harvesting operations. I don't, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. I There's no more don't know, we, I don't know we'd even entertain doing that because I don't believe we've got the regulatory authority right. uh, to, that well, would be imposing some kind of deed restriction, <coughs> and I'm not sure. We actually have uh, the ability to require something like that to this. Um, any any proposal to possibly <coughs> alter, dredge, fill, or remove uh, an applicant, you know, if they wish to try and widen beyond what's being presented, you know, we're evaluating your project as presented here tonight. That doesn't cut off the fact that, you know, in the future the property owner may wish to submit applications for other type of activities. So. Right. It would clearly require an additional application and. and Quite frankly, there's no intent here to use it for that purpose, what you're describing. Today. So, um, I think that's all I have to say. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the septic system itself, again, is going to be a Presby uh, leaching system. It's, uh, uh, is it, does it have nitrogen reduction potential? It, I don't it, think so. It, it doesn't get the credit for it. <coughs> My name's Greg Bernard. I work in uh, John Nicholas' office. I've um, conceptually designed the septic system. That's a Presby system. It is not given DEP uh, nitrogen removal credit. However, it is recognized as a passive treatment uh, system. Uh, you'll see that there's a retaining wall uh, that we've constructed, that we're proposing uh, down gradient of the leaching, uh, the Presby leaching field uh, with a 40 mil HDPE uh, liner on the inside of that wall. 
Um, we're trying to limit uh, the impact on the uh, local resource area as best we can, and that was uh, pretty much the best we could do with that. I'm going to turn this over to you, Brett. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> if I could have my magic wand back. I'm sorry. That's a great one. <laughs> <You're wrong. laughs> um, just to set the context, now on the Commission's agenda for this evening, um, is a request for a certificate of compliance, but it is for <clears throat> the permitting in, uh, which allowed the installation of a water flow control device in the berm to the historic ice pond. And uh, we're going <clears> to <throat> talk about that um, once we get to that particular agenda item. But I just, so <clears throat> in the course of this application being submitted and the review being conducted, uh, it was brought to my attention that there was an order of conditions uh, issued for the construction of what was um, clearly labeled as a temporary crossing. Well, the temporary crossing has been in there for over a decade now. It is not <coughs> temporary by anyone's standards. Um, in my recent uh, interactions with the district forester, um, it also became clear that the current method methodology used here, the reinforced flared concrete pipe and the gravel <coughs> fill uh, utilized to go across there does not meet the standards or requirements uh, for the Forest Cutting Practices Act and therefore would not pass muster with the Division of Conservation <coughs> Services and would not pass muster with the Department of Environmental Protection. And the order that was issued for this was clearly labeled as a temporary crossing. So we will have to address uh, and uh, work with the applicant to move in the direction of requesting a certificate of compliance, which <coughs> is going to require the removal of that crossing as it exists now and the restoration of that area. Uh, the impacted BVW, the impacted stream bed, uh, the uh, deposited fill that has migrated in the area. It, interestingly enough, the order of conditions which we will consider closing for the beaver deceiver or water flow control device in the ice pond berm also had provisions in it because the crossing had recently been inundated uh, by spring flood at the time, which I think was in the 2006 time period. Mm -hmm. We do remember that from the Mother's Day flood, which yeah. had moved and basically flushed out all the gravel between the reinforced concrete pipes and had left the concrete really pipe sitting there, but no ability to cross the stream and had distributed all this uh, gravel fill and flushed it um, down gradient in the stream channel. So um, there was some restoration efforts at the time, but the crossing wasn't removed. So, so hopefully uh, with the property owner and the applicant's representatives all being of the same mindset, we are going to go for restoring that area. The restoration of the Woods Road, though, is not going to be 100% complete. Their proposal for the construction of the single family residence is going to have part of the woods road that leads <coughs> down gradient towards that crossing. Part of it is going to be converted into maintained lawn. Um, no ifs, ands, or buts. <coughs> Nobody's making, you know, that's not a hidden fact or whatever. It's just what is proposed through this, this process with this particular project proposal. Um, that being said, though, um, the office will need to have a wetland scientist prepare a wetlands replication plan for restoration of the stream bed, the stream bank, the filled impacted BVW from, that is documented in the original issued order of conditions for this, as well as restoration of the buffer zone up to where the edge or limit of work is going to be proscribed because that will be the edge of the maintained lawn. So there will have to be a restoration replanting plan uh, come in and be a component of this filing. Um, Excuse me, other than the road, is that just woods, the rest of the theoretical lawn? Right now, is it just woods? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, on, on either side. Um, now, there is a history, and uh, uh, Mr. Bernard 
pointed out to me that you could actually see the corridor going through the isolated vegetated wetlands of where the historic <coughs> cart path was located. It was repositioned because of that being isolated vegetated wetlands. It was seasonally flooded and inundated and therefore not too amenable to having wheeled vehicles <laughs> try right. to negotiate it. We're not, um, probably getting muck and mired. I don't know, but that is definitely in the past because you could just see the fact that there weren't mature trees and you could, once you got in line with it, you could see where the route was. Um, <clears throat> So that being said, so we will need um, a complete set of quantity of plans in order to distribute these to all the commissioners since I, it appears I've only been given maybe four, four plan sheets here. So we'll need a Two complete, sets. We'll need a complete set to be able to distribute to all Hard the commissioners as, as we move forward in this process. <clears throat> I haven't had an opportunity to review this, but Part of the revisions on here are a response to the site visit um, where the original filing um, did not express where the commission would normally impose a 25 foot no cut, no disturb. So I had requested that that be depicted. Um, it was depicted for the isolated vegetated wetlands area here, but it was not depicted for the bordering vegetated wetlands at all. That that led, also you've heard tonight about how as, uh, as, uh, as mitigation for in some areas they're not able to um, have that 25 foot restriction. Uh, specifically, the proposed path for the relocated Woods Road or Cart Path comes very close to the isolated vegetated wetland and goes into where the normal 25 foot no cut restricted area would have been expressed. Um, so obviously there's some areas that they wish the commission to give them an allowance for actually cutting and disturbing what would be the no cut. As mitigation for that, they're proposing areas where they are not proposing development activity and they don't see any future need to go in and cut and prune. They're, they're offering to expand uh, the restricted area in those places to compensate. Another area where we do not have the full 25 foot is the positioning of this system. Although this has been modified, the first plan you received in your packets, this was a rectangular field um, and so now yeah, here here's the original submission yeah, that's here. what I took out on the site visit so you, you can see the difference. you can see that again in response to the site visit they made some attempts uh, to try as much as uh, practical and not impact the functioning of the proposed uh, subsurface uh, sewage disposal system they modified its configuration to uh, provide some offset <coughs> from the resource area so there can be some with a no cut, no disturbance area. The fact that there will also be a retaining wall there is also going to uh, lessen the impact. So that, so even though that area is thinner, it's probably more protected by the fact that the system being there with its retaining wall, there isn't going to be any propensity for anyone to necessarily be going in that area. But again, the um, the reason for tonight and the reason. Besides my running out of time, I didn't prepare a written memo is because I also wanted to have this kind of discussion with the commission uh, because there's a number of different activities going on here right. that you may or may not have you know, uh, different levels of concern about. And before my interactions with the applicant's representatives get too far down to etching things in stone or on the plans here, we wanted to see uh, what your feelings and what your concerns were, whether we're heading in the right direction with this proposal or whether there's things on here that you just absolutely positively are very uncomfortable with. And I can see the house and the septic system. I don't know what the to do would be about putting in a new road. Um, yeah, the other one should be taken out anyways, which it was already agreed it was going right. to be taken out. Right. And the logging operation has just been completed, so it's probably 15, 20 years before it'll happen again. 
I didn't know whether you guys were going to, uh, you know. I don't think so. Well, uh, I will. I do. I do remember. Um, I remember uh, Bruce Tompkins and John DeCoulis coming in at one point in time uh, about the temporary crossing and mentioning that they wished the commission to allow them to leave that crossing in place, that they had had a conversation with um, Fire Chief Broderick, and that um, there was a, a safety component <coughs> to that access <coughs> being provided that would accommodate uh, forest fi the uh, forest firefighting <coughs> equipment that the town fire department had. That being said, I had a conversation shortly after that because I investigated what the weight limit was of the forest firefighting truck and got back to John DeCoulis with the weight and with my assertion that a timber span crossing could accommodate the weight of a forest firefighting vehicle equipment and it would bridge and go across the stream and therefore remove all <coughs> these impacts to the actual stream bed, the restriction of the channel by it being forced into pipes, and the removal of that loose gravel fill that during spring floods and storm events had a propensity to migrate down the stream channel. So, so we were working on a pathway to possibly modify that crossing, uh, but that can be accomplished with this proposal. This proposal is talking about a timber span going across here, which is one of the reasons why the proposed filling of BBW is so proportionately smaller for that area than it was for uh, the original crossing. So the detail of that log stringer bridge that Brent's just referring to. Mm -hmm. Well, that raises a question, I guess, in my mind, Brent. Um, you, you talked in terms about a forest fire fighting truck. I don't know what that means. Is that is that something more or less, or is it a standard rowdy fire truck? Or, I mean, look at all the problems we've had out it's in a, California with, a, with forest fires and droughts and rowdy, and you know, it's a piece of the town fire equipment that they specifically identify as being their vehicle <laughs> for fighting forest fires. <coughs> believe I said it had an 8,000 or 9,000 gallon tank? Ton, no, tonnage to it. No, I don't know it's got a tank that big. Uh, but it does have a tank on it. But they do have a specific vehicle right. that is for going into cart pass and woods roads yeah. or whatever. And um, so that, that was investigated. In fact, I have investigated it um, just for your, your knowledge. I got the width and the height of it specifically so, so that my pruning activities on the Smith Lane Trail. So I've always pruned to accommodate that vehicle being able to get in there because Smith Lane is also mm -hmm. um, potential access for going in and, uh, and addressing any type of uh, fire in the woods. In Brent, there. you don't happen to have uh, ready access to aerial images of that, do you? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Because I think yeah. it would be helpful to see the aerial Im images and you could actually see just how much fuel is in that 152 acres. I mean, it's, it is significant. The, the fallen timber and, and the... Well, yeah, the, the cutting that was just done in there was actually um, <coughs> primarily, a, primarily a salvage cutting because the oak overstory suffered anywhere from 80 to 90 percent mortality. So uh, every, every eight out of 10 mature oaks died to, yeah. from the uh, drought the combination gypsy moth and then drought cycle that we experienced in, in 2016. So, um, so that harvesting operation was to go in there and, and get uh, a lot of the oak. Now, so, but there's still a fair amount, and that property has been managed uh, for its uh, timber products. And yes, he has approximately, I think his planned cycle is 10 years, I think. I think he's been on a 10 year right. cycle. <clears throat> you know, for, for harvesting in that area. So, so there, is, um, <coughs> there isn't an immediate need for that crossing to be utilized, but um, the crossing will more than likely be utilized um, for, or can be utilized for timber harvesting. Yeah. 
So here again, if the commission, it, you know, they're not proposing widening or, or the potential footprint that would accommodate a roadway, but you use the same type criteria in identifying a potential crossing of a stream, you look for the narrowest point where you have the least amount of impact of bordering vegetated wetlands, where you have the potential for the least amount of impact uh, to the <coughs> intermittent stream channel. So, so yes, we've keyed in on that spot in this particular area, but the proposal is not for a 50-foot wide <coughs> right-of-way that would support a 28-foot to possibly 32-foot uh, street with sidewalk uh, that you know would be required. That would be a totally different application. Um, um, do, do we understand from the application that the new Woods Road will be completed before, <coughs> the, before the house and septic system are done? That's the purpose, yes. First phase, second it's phase. It's the first phase, second phase, yeah. That follows along with the Commission's normal requirements to see that um, wetlands replication and restoration <coughs> efforts get conducted prior to uh, allowing the development activity to proceed, as, as well as, again, um, applying a practical scenario to this. Uh, since they're trying to put a residential dwelling here, with a driveway or whatever, it would make sense to cut off by the structure and the system. It wouldn't make sense to cut off your access to be able to deal with this crossing and doing the restoration and removal work that needs to be done. So, so sequentially, mm -hmm. it, that the restoration and, and replication first, right? needs to be done first. Well, I was more concerned, more immediately concerned with being able to get fire access into that into that large lot before the second, the original driveway is. Well, they didn't use any of this road for any of the harvesting they did this year, <clears throat> so they would probably be going in the same way that they did. Well, not if there's major construction going on in there. Depends on where it is. <clears throat> yeah, that. If they can avoid. The, 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 building the timing, area. the timing of the OSRD proposal on Weathersfield Street has the potential for, you know, the crossing of Taylor Brook to be under construction and not necessarily. Utilize. Al although, again, since he just did the cycle of cutting and we can probably necessarily at least project that it might be 10 years before, um, you know, timber growth in there would support any other type of harvesting activity that we might, you know, be looking at 10 years hence before any forest harvesting happened out there. But the question of access, again, the access that's proposed on here would be of the minimum nature, as I read it, the minimum nature that would allow, like I said, the forest firefighting truck, or if they wanted to go in and do some kind of, uh, they might conduct some timber stand improvement, which doesn't necessarily mean that they'd be hauling anything out, but it might mean that they go in to, to do some type of... Uh, now, this next bridge, is that a temporary bridge also? The log bridge is that the log bridge is, is considered the temporary. temporary, yes. Okay. And how long is the temporary bridge good for? Depending upon the wood utilized for it, it probably would last ten years. Oh I mean so we can put you can so anybody that's doing forestry in town, we could cover up a stream for access to it for fire protection and stuff? Well again, this the characteristics of this particular site, that's where this uh, topic came into consideration. Now, we did have, I don't remember the exact address, but on Weathersfield Street, the gentleman who had the grove of pines that all had the black carpenter ants, and he had an intermittent stream right behind his house. The uh, logger that he utilized took and chained three three oak trunks together, two of them, and utilized them to go across. And he used them as a, a very temporary bridge to go across and do um, his cutting of the uh, large, mature uh, white pines that were infested with carpenter ants. And if I may, uh, Brent's characterization of what we're trying to do with this new road is absolutely correct. I mean, this is just the minimum uh, constructed road necessary to get 
uh, logging equipment and uh, a, a forest fire, the, the town's forest fire fighting truck in there. No more. I mean, that, that's the only purpose. The, the, the key here is to minimize impact. Now, the also DEP's policy, which we try to follow, is also since the order issued for this crossing was all keyed and said to be temporary or whatever, um, the first requirement of the uh, my recommendation as the first requirement to the commission would be for that to be removed so that a certificate of compliance request uh, could be entertained. So that also drives the restoration activity for that particular area as, as well. So um, I don't, again, did, there's a couple of different puzzle pieces here that uh, we're making an attempt to fit them together to achieve uh, the best sequence of regulatory compliance uh, with the State <coughs> Wetlands Protection Act. Um, isolated vegetated wetlands area is non-jurisdictional to the state, but it's jurisdictional to the commission. And when I did start working here, we did a lot of investigative work to establish the fact that there was not a defined hydrologic connection between these two wetlands, which is why this one ended up being isolated. Because otherwise, if we had been able to determine that there was a connection there, it would be bordering vegetative wetlands. And John, I'm sure you remember that because you and I spent a fair amount of time auguring and everything else in that particular part of the terrain to make sure that there wasn't a connection. There's seasonal flow when the isolated vegetated wetland area gets totally inundated, say there's frozen ground conditions and it fills up with water, it does flow down gradient as you would expect it to, uh, but there is no defined channel there. And it also is not, um, doesn't sustain the quarter acre foot in yeah. terms of its volumetric capacity. So For an isolated land subject, subject flooding. to flooding. Yeah. <clears throat> Just to be clear, downgrading so, is distinctly in that direction? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the road would be constructed such that if there were a flow coming out of there, it would not be obstructed by the road? Correct. There is more than, I, we already talked about this, um, making provisions for some type of pipe or something else in there so that, so that the cart path itself would not act as a, a berm and dam. I'm wondering, uh, rather than putting a pipe in, would the commission be willing to entertain uh, some geotextile and some large stones just to create a pervious subsurface? I mean, is that yeah. just to <clears throat> maybe that might be a little bit less of an impact than a than a pipe? I think it might be worth thinking about. Yeah. So you're creating a, a, an actual pervious mm -hmm. sub base for that roadbed that, that we're talking about right here. So maybe like for 20 feet long. We could create a pervious subbase with large stone, maybe two or three inch stone, with a geotextile below and above it to allow that water, if it does overflow, it would flow underneath the roadway and not wash it out. I think that might be a better, almost like a French drain, if you will. Just a suggestion rather than right. a fight. Well, I think Mr. Tompkins, on part of his land over towards Long Hill Road, He's got a couple of cart paths, and I think one of them has got parallel lines of granite blocks that allow an opening right. between them, but it's, ga it's gapped enough so you don't go down in them with the normal tire <coughs> diameters that you have on, on forestry equipment or whatever. They just basically drive back over. It's just a little, a little bump, but it allows that uh, yeah. relief, so to speak. Yeah, that would be perfectly acceptable for this intended use, which is... Uh, Sporadic, to say the least. <clears throat> All right, any other questions? No, but my old, again, want, want to hear if there's any further concerns from any of the commissioners, but in, in basic ending with my recommendation that there is 
a need for more information as we Definitely. move forward with this application, especially, especially specifics in regards to replication and restoration efforts that need to be accomplished. But just wanted to, in a sense, uh, inter introduce the project uh, to you and see and hear what any of your specific concerns are in regards to this. Would the commission uh, uh, be interested in uh, us creating a greater restoration area? Um, when you're referring to restoration, Brent, are you referring to just the, the area that's being restored? Uh, for the existing roadway? Or Not unless you've got a bad invasive species uh, problem over there. I mean, the less work, is the better. Yeah, well, we, yeah, we actually did talk about that a little bit because this Woods Road corridor has ended up being uh, a good staging ground for uh, pro proliferation of bittersweet. And I think there's some barberry in there, if I recall correctly, mostly bittersweet. So actually we did have a discussion about there being the possibility of a component um, of some invasive species suppression and removal, which would actually enhance the desirability of the lot if it is going to be uh, utilized for a single family residence. It would be good not to have the, the whole side of their driveway being overrun with bittersweet. Mm -hmm. Smothering all the trees that are what few trees are there. <clears throat> so, so there's no need for us to uh, provide any additional restoration area than what we're showing here. I mean, the the idea of Brent that I you're wouldn't think so. <clears throat> Less work, the least damage, the better. Yeah. Know? I mean, I would think if you're trying to legitimately put it back to nature, uh, just fix what was done. And well, let, let me say the two dimensions. You know, the fact that we use two-dimensional uh, methodology for, uh, for depicting and discussing about this project, it may possibly be uh, field amended, again, because I said there is a history of gravel being washed downstream. So, so even though we take that original order of conditions, which had quantified the filling of BVW in order to put that temporary crossing in. When we go back there and we seek to replicate that impacted BVW, I have a sneaking suspicion we are going to find that the gravel outwash has actually mitigated and that we may in fact be conducting restoration or replication activities on a greater square footage because as we acknowledge and get the gravel out of the downstream area there, we might find that we're really freeing up some suppressed. Yeah, I, I would not doubt that, Brent. I think you're right. So the question is, how far down gradient do we go? So <coughs> what Brent is talking about is debris flowing down gradient here in the stream. You'd go to the end. So so how far do we go? I mean, do we go to this point here? Well, let's, I let's think hope it didn't go that far. I, I don't think it has. We're going to have to do some reconnaissance there, but I think what we're going to find is that more than likely <laughs> this area of channel, and we're going to find a a gradation. We're going to find the heavier, the heavier aggregate material is going to be dropped out first, and then we're going to get smaller plumes tending more to sand as they go down in this direction yep. towards where the new proposed crossing is going to be. So I would say the expectation should be that we're going to put a field reconnaissance uh, component or condition in there that when we go to do the replication, we'll do an investigation. Uh, to see if the gravel plumes, how far down they have gone, and whether at the same time we're replicating and getting those reinforced culvert pipes out of there, it would be most advantageous to consider the removal of those gravel yeah. plumes at the same time and also be the less disruptive on the BBW on either side of the bank that hasn't been impacted because in a sense we'll be doing the work in the channel, pulling it out. Yeah. No, I, I think that would be perfectly fine for uh, for Mr. Tompkins and Mr. Jordans. Uh, so uh, the question, though, becomes uh, timing. Uh, when do we want to do that uh, restoration work? Is that something that we want to do in the summer during low flow? Or, or uh, you know, is it possible for us to maybe undertake this work uh, in May, April or May, and then maybe wait till the lowest flow condition in July or August to go after that stream bed 
um, when we may have greater success going after it. So most of that is in uh, bordering vegetated wetlands? Yes, yeah, so here's within the, the 25 foot, no cut, no disturb? Uh, so the BBW line is here, the yeah. state BBW. Um, so yeah, we would be completely, we would be in a resource area, a state wetland resource area, doing this work. And right now, that right now the existing cart path woods road is providing the access through what is going to become no cut, no disturbance area. So you really have to do your your replication and your restoration you to work, first, yeah. and then do a retreat out of there Definitely. and restore as you go up gradient till you get to where the proposed edge of maintained lawn is is going to be. What crosses the stream there now? It's a 12 foot wide roadway. Well, actually, right in this area, Mr. Turner? Yes. Well, I'm specifically concerned about the bridge. I, in terms of all this discussion, I, I assume that bridge will remain in place so that the lot can be accessed until the other bridge and access road is done. I don't think it's even usable now, is it? It is. Oh, it is? You it drive is a vehicle usable. across it? You can, yep. Oh, it seems to me it needs to stay usable until the other access point. It well, seems to me no, that no. impacts the well, times that we're talking about here, and maybe the restoration ought to start behind the housework towards the stream. Okay, so here it, here it is. Yep, there's a great picture of it. So that, that view is from approximately right here. We're looking, okay, we've got different views. Yeah, i got a couple different views, sorry. <clears throat> um, so, so there's the. Uh, so you can see it's passable. You know, yeah. it's, so with all, all this fill <coughs> on top of it, as well as stone that's been used. So to you're flow. looking upstream. Yes. Actually, we're looking downstream. Yeah, looking down. Well, yeah. This is from yeah. Okay. These pictures were taken as part of the evaluation of the ice pond berm, and the removal of the water flow control device. Mm. Yeah, that view right there is. Probably about right here, looking this way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bernard and I were having a discussion because uh, my evaluation of the site, and I guess I'll go, I'll go back to this picture. My evaluation of the site was pointing out the fact that the stone had been used to sort of armor the bank of the stream, and it went all the way down to the crossing when the original proposal for the restoration of the stone sluiceway and the installation of that water flow control device had only shown provisions for a 10-foot flexible uh, discharge pipe, a pair of them, 8-inch diameter, I believe, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. And, and there was only a 10-foot distance. And so uh, then uh, Mr. Bernard had looked up the order for the temporary crossing and I was using that to cross-reference the fact that no stone was proposed to be used along the stream channel for the crossing. The only place stone was uh, proposed to be used was sort of as the headwall uh, or abutments um, to keep the fill over those concrete pipes. So, um, so I was saying because we were trying to pick, we were trying to pick a distance to say where the stone would be left as it's associated with the sluice way to the berm and where the stone needed to come out as the restoration efforts for this crossing. We actually found there was a fairly large, probably can't see it too well, there was a fairly large uh, stump of a dead hardwood tree on the other side here. And I think our, our approximation was that that was about 10 feet <coughs> down gradient from the berm, and therefore that that needed to be the point where you then started taking out those stones because the stones were all brought in. They were all imported to the site. They weren't native, as, as we discussed on, this, on yeah. the site visit. Um, so we were trying to figure out where restoration needed to start on the banks and that it would be part of the removal of this crossing. So the question is, should we uh, label that on the plan? Should we label maybe print? Um, oh yeah. From that dam, like bank restoration. Actually, right? what we're probably going to need to do is have a blow up, and I don't know. You haven't looked at the other sheet. If there's a space 
you know, if we can manage something. Yeah, we'll, we'll, oh, make, yeah. we'll make it fit. So we can, we, and, and that's why my suggestion also to, like, uh, bring in the services of, of Bill Manuel of Wetlands Land Management. Yeah, that's who we've been talking to. Yeah. So, because as we get into the deep, we're going to need, <laughs> number one, we need to establish those parameters so that you folks aren't surprised. We don't want to, you know, go out there and say to you, well, you need to start taking these boulders <coughs> from there, and you look mm -hmm. at us and say, well, geez, no, I thought it was no, just It deep. makes sense to be prescriptive. There's no right. question. Yeah, right. As well as to get an understanding, too, because that then affects the restoration of the topography. The topography there seems to be just a gentle slope that went down into the stream. It doesn't look like the stream really had well-defined banks. It seems that it got forced into having well-defined banks at this crossing <coughs> by the use of the, of the boulders to kind of... I guess my concern here is the Correct. work in conjunction with the upcoming growing season. You know, do we yeah. want to do that bank work just before the growing season hits, thereby, you know, maybe promoting, you know, having it all set up so when the growing season hits, bam, you know, we can get we can get a good restoration going. These are things I like to hear from your wetland scientist who has done a detailed reconnaissance of the site and then, then can come back to us and utilize yep. his experience and what he believes. Well, I, I guess my concern, I, I've done a number of restoration projects, uh, filled, uh, almost a quarter acre uh, restoration projects actually. Um, but my concern, again, is timing. I mean, one of mm -hmm. the things that I've always found on these projects is hydrology and timing. And, uh, you know, making sure that the levels work uh, because that's really what drives growth, uh, the, high, the water levels. So um, would the commission like to see this if we can, you know, reach an agreement, say, after the, at the next meeting to, to get this put to bed, would it be a good idea to try to get this work done before the growing season starts? You know, like the bank work that you were just describing, Brent. I've you know, always I, found it a lot easier in August and September. I think because of the hydrology, I think we really need to be looking at yeah, the July, summer. late late July to do that, and then for planting and stuff to occur uh, in September. the early part of September, <clears throat> yeah. going into October. Uh, again, especially with the way seasonal precipitation has been, the last thing in the world we want to do is go pull all those boulders out of that site, get a bunch of jute netting in place, and then yeah. just have that stuff all washed and yeah. sluiced the big flood. Yeah. down to the golf course. They won't appreciate it. <laughs> well, they might like the water, but not the sediment. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I mean, that, that's one of the things we'll be talking about with Bill, is just coordinating the, the scheduling of the work and um, how the restoration will unfold in sequence and at what times of the growing season and hydro, what, what can be anticipated from the hydrology uh, or the precipitation that, that we're supposed to have in, in the summer seasons. Okay, so, so my recommendation is for a continuance because continuance there is a need for more information as, as well as uh, we need to right. flesh out um, the closure of that order for, for that cross. Well, one last thought though, is, do you think it would be possible for us to maybe undertake this work before the growing season starts? I thought uh, you just asked us. I know, I know. You're talking about bank before, and now you're talking right about now. I'm talking about the road itself and, and the actual bridge, the the current bridge. Would it be possible to maybe phase this so that we do phase one, we get rid of this existing woods road, we begin this construction before the growing season, and then we go to phase two, we construct the house, but then we come back in the summertime, late summer during low flow conditions, and and do this as a separate add on of phase one. You know, yeah, yeah, so one at a time, I would think. You know, get rid of the old stuff first, get a, get a uh, certificate of compliance, I, I, and then well, go I, from there. Yeah. You don't want to take out the old bridge until the new one is. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I would suggest that we take care of this and try to restore it as best we can before the growing season starts. Put the new bridge in within a, a few weeks <coughs> of that being dismantled and, and uh, restored. Uh, put this new road in. Uh, but then give us an opportunity to go ahead with phase two and then come back in the summer and tackle the bank and stream bed issues of, uh, you know, the, the foreign debris that's flowed down gradient here. 
I thought I heard Brent recommend starting at the bank and, and retreating out mm -hmm. of it, though. Yeah. Well, we have to start from the stream bed. Do? I mean, the, the stream bed is. By hand? Uh, some of it will be done by hand, but there'll be small equipment, like maybe a mini excavator yeah. that'll get some of the larger equipment. My point is, that you need the road. You need what? You need the you road. Need you need the access road. See, that was my concern too. <coughs> I was thinking that you needed, you could not get rid of this access corridor until this was all to done. do. Yeah. Well, that you needed this access corridor <clears throat> in order to do this, and be, and because of the channelized flow here, that this work really needed to at, at all possible to hope for some <clears throat> low flow period in order to do that, especially because of the amount of hard structured boulders in the piping that's being removed that needs to be transported out of there, waiting. Waiting to do the gravel fill removal after you've gotten the crossing out of the way puts you into this funny situation where you've got to have this constructed. You're going to have to come in. You're going to go down into there to get the gravel out of there. You maybe destabilize that area by getting the boulders and stuff out of there. So you, you're putting yourself into a challenging Situation because that's fairly steep. That's a steep slope on the other side. Yeah, it's actually no more gradually sloped over here. Well, I, I think it's the other way, Brent. I think this is actually steeper here. But well, but I, what I was envisioning was accessing it from from this new relocated road because the downstream impacts would be in this area here. But then you'd be doing all your work and the no cut, no disturb, correct? Whereas if you t just forget about the house, you got to fix yep. this problem first. Yep. You fix this back all the way out. Then we go and start work over here. Now yeah. you're not going back and forth, back and forth. You're destroying everything. I mean, your house might be put off, but I mean, this house has been up in the air for a couple of years that I've been here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, well, all right. Well, I, I think the best thing right now is just to work with Bill and come up with a plan, and we'll work. Right. Yeah. Right. See what. See what. You yeah. know. See what he, some he says, Esther. He's had a chance to do some reconnaissance out there and and, and think about this because it's. While it's not a complicated project, it is rendered challenging by the volume of those imported boulders <laughs> that yeah. need to be. You can see from the pictures, there's the a side. lot of material that's yeah. brought in here. No yeah. question. Yeah. yeah, it needs to be taken out carefully. Um, some of that would probably be left better in there because it'll cause less erosion. <laughs> yeah. No, that's what it does. It slows it down. Right. 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 Well, again. But I think there's an overabundance of decorative rocks <laughs> that would normally be used <laughs> to um, give some definition to your stream channel, which I think is what you're proposing. Um, so I'm, I'm sure there is some material there, but I think there's at least 50 to 60 percent of boulders there that more or less need to be escorted from the site. Yeah. And what, what, what's going to happen to them? What other, where, where else would they be placed to be non-native? Well, we did talk about, and there's a note in here, actually using this retaining wall here, actually using that stone uh, from the re from the existing stone wall here, uh, as well as these boulders down here. We're proposing uh, this note here to actually use that for the retaining wall. Okay. Yeah. So there's so use for on some the of them on site. It's just unclear exactly what. That's why we were just. You were actual witness to the actual discussion about where to establish the point right. to start thinking about what boulders needed to come out. So, uh, great. Thank you very much. All right. So, I want a motion to. We need their continue. permission for a continuance, and also see if there's anyone in the audience that wants to ask. Anybody a in the audience care to have anything to address to this? Can we have your approval of the. Continuance? Yes. They have such a motion? Uh, hang on one second. Sure. Um, I like the, the fact that they cut back that area uh, for the retaining wall. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now I'm finding out that it's going to be stone or parcel, partially, partially stone. Partially stone, yeah. Okay. I think at some point I didn't see any details for it. I'd like to see some more information on that wall. Mm -hmm. Just to see, because uh, like a uh, um, cross section, uh, yeah. yeah, something like there that. Just detail. to see how it's going to be uh, right. interfacing with the um, the corner of the resource area there. 
as well. Yep. Good point. Thank you. Do we have such a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. So that'll be for February 12th. Stone walls on those larger portion of that big huge lot. Yeah. Ooh. You could always yeah. move some of those stones to supplement those stone walls. I don't see any problem with that. I don't. I don't I'm see it. Who moved and seconded? I was trying to. Remember. I moved. I think I seconded. I don't see any need to be taken off site. No, I didn't. Okay. Sometimes you can't. I don't think you can around. You can't be moved. Can't move out of town. It's like well. Oh well, they came in. They can't. They came in from somewhere, but yes, I'm sure Mr. Tompkins' property has a lot of boulders on it, so I'm sure there wasn't a hard time finding it. Or who knows, they came came out of the Emily Lane construction more yeah, than likely. I'm sure that, uh, <coughs> yeah, a lot of stone there. Oh, uh, they had an awful lot of stone, of stone <laughs> during construction of Emily Lane. <laughs> All right. Since I brought up the pictures <coughs> that are uh, relevant to the discussion about the certificate of compliance request mm -hmm. right. for uh, retiring or closing out the water flow control device um, prior to moving to the continued <coughs> amended um, request to amend the OC for land off of Daniels Road. Since it's the same applicant and their representatives or whatever, do you want to just Jump to the certificate of compliance. Yeah, we can. Request. Did and, you have a note on that? Um, well, it's on. It's an, it's an agenda item towards the bottom of the agenda. Okay. Uh, I do well. Certificate of compliance. I do. I do have a memo on that. Yes, I do. Yep. We have a new, re new request for a certificate of compliance, DEP 63-0492. For land off Emily Lane, Map 9, <coughs> Parcel Lot 23, Tompkins to Judges Trust, Bruce Tompkins, Trustee. So, I remember to the Commission, please be advised I reviewed the file related to this order of condition 63-492, dated September 28, 2005, for installation of a water flow control device in the historic ice pond, stone, and earthen berm. I have visited the site various times, including on January 17, 2019, to inspect the condition of the earthen berm and stream outlet area. As set forth in Mr. DeCoulis' letter of December 21st, 2018, the effective operation of the installed water flow control device to mitigate beaver activity that plugged the stone sluiceway of the ice pond berm was <coughs> prematurely shortened. Since the beaver activity decreased with apparent, apparent abandonment of the site, it was mutually agreed upon that removal of all the non-functioning components of the water flow control structure was the preferred course of action for the site. The office has received an affidavit from Mr. Greg Bernard attesting to the removal of all the man-made parts and pieces from the pond and outfall. <coughs> I requested this submittal since the water levels are seasonally high and a large portion of the installation was originally submerged. Therefore, I couldn't verify it. <laughs> Just as a footnote. Uh, my field inspection verified that the earthen berm area is well vegetated and stabilized all visible sign, signs of the installation have been removed because there used to be metal fence posts sticking out of the, the water and stuff. There was some mitigation work done in 2005 to repair storm damage associated with the downstream temporary stream crossing, and that was completed successfully and verified at earlier site visits. The crossing area is currently stable, and the recent access by equipment has been mitigated by straw mulch being applied to the cart path, Woods Road. The OC did not contain any ongoing conditions. The commission may wish to consider voting to issue a complete certificate of compliance to close the OC uh, for DEP 63-492. Any questions? 
Wait, is there such a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. If you want to read the agenda item for the continued um, request. request to amend. The 830 item is mm -hmm. the continued request to amend the order of conditions DEP 63-0625 at Land of Daniels Road, Map 9, Parcel Lot 23, Tompkins DeJardis Trust, with Tompkins Trustee as request to amend proposed construction of duplex buildings associated with roadway, driveways, utilities, stormwater facilities, grading possibly within a 100-foot buffer zone of bordering vegetated wetlands. You have the board. So, Mr. John DeCoulis is with us this evening, and we have received what we're interpreting as the final report. Hopefully. From mm -hmm. Horsley and Whitman. Mm -hmm. Well, you're, you're going to make it the final right. report. Um, if you don't mind my interjecting yes, go ahead. here. Yeah. Um, so apparently from reading uh, Horsley and Whitten's uh, final review, the only thing that the commission is recommended to look for at this point in time is a revision to the operations and maintenance plan uh, because apparently it did not include the new Infil infiltration inf basin one. Right. So uh, upon so so my recommendation, if the commission would so choose, is that uh, upon <clears throat> upon submittal of the revision to the operations and maintenance plan within 14 days, and the review and approval by the office, that upon that approval, the public hearing will be considered closed, and the agent is directed, if you direct me to craft and issue an amended order of conditions uh, upon determination that all documents and plans for the public record are appropriately received with accompanying electronic files. I just want to do a final go through and make mm -hmm. sure that I've got two hard copies and one electronic copy of everything that forms the full plan set for the project as well as these uh, various other documents including the operations and maintenance plan. Okay. Revised, yeah. which is the one missing piece of this book and And we should have that within a week. So, do you want to? How do you want to? What do you want us to do tonight? Just to continue? Say, <coughs> that one of you say so okay. moved. And <laughs> All right. Uh, any questions? <laughs> everybody, do we hear a motion to accept that? Okay. Uh, presented? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you again. Yes, thank you. Good night. And of course, upon getting the final invoicing from Horsley and Witten, I will hopefully see that there are monies left and return those to the applicant. Or if there aren't enough monies, I will request <laughs> whatever the balance due yeah. is from them uh, before it contemplating issuance of any type of permit. Where do we stand on that? Mm, 
I don't know. I didn't look it up. Right, there still, is, there still is. There still is money. There still is. Uh, yeah, I'll see you anyway. There still is money on deposit. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now. Good night. Thank you. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially, yes. I, mean, I walked back there once all the way to the Taylor, Taylor Brook starts starts in there somewhere. <coughs> I don't know exactly where because it goes off of the I it came commission's up. property, so I don't you know. I thought it did. I mean I'm sure some wetlands feeds into that, but I thought that Taylor Brook from what you said with regard to the Moran property rows behind the police and fire station. Well, yeah, the, the headwaters this time are of year, the headwaters everywhere. are in there somewhere. Yeah, this time um, of year they're everywhere. But when you first go into Smith Lane and there's that big <coughs> depression, which is actually on Mr. Riquier's property, that's a certified vernal pool. There's no discernible outlet on the other side of that. That appears to all just be a pit, it was probably part of the gravel operation that intercepted groundwater and so it's always got water in it except, you know, at the drought it recedes. Behind that somewhere, the USGS shows an intermittent stream channel originating and heading down and eventually becoming Taylor Brook uh, as it works its way towards uh, Brothers Hill Street. <coughs> I see the river dying. He was going to put up a big stink against it. Pardon? He was going to put up a big stink against it. Really? He's got, he's got problems on his property. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to go to the next one. Oh, yeah. All right. Want me to re just read this next one? Um, Rally Realty? Is it? Certificate of uh, Compliance Request. 176. Oh, okay. Uh, certificate of, of Completion, SMP. Oh, right, yeah, the stormwater permit. permit. Yes, 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 yes. 176 Central Street, Map 24, Parcel 39, Lot 6, Rowley Central Realty, LLC. Well, let me accuse myself from discussion on this. Yes, please. Okay. You don't have to leave. It's just I'll recuse myself. Um, <coughs> so the property apparently transferred <coughs> on Friday. Um, and my inspection before the snow, whatever, so it's actually what the... Sam, is this one of the new houses? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, this is the one across from Mr. Freitag's uh, yep. field where the mums are. The first one. Mums and the dads. And I do not understand why, since the lot was originally proscribed as being 180 Central Street, I have no idea why they came up with a new street, a new street number for the house on this lot because this is the only lot with frontage on Central Street. So the other lots front on Bennett Hill, so there can be no right. 180 Central Street. I don't know what happens. That address just disappears, I guess. Well, it's been rendered. It's been yeah, rendered. I mean, that the oh. whole area along there was. I mean, there still is frontage. Always, it was never numbered. <clears throat> yeah. Well, somebody uh, came up with the 180. I, well, other than the zoning. <coughs> yeah. I would guess that's because the driveway is. Closer to 176 than 180. Because what happened to 178? Okay. So, <clears throat> so please be advised I re reviewed the file related to this stormwater management permit number 31 2018, dated May 17, 2018. 
2018 for development of the six residential single-family dwellings. I have visited the site various times, the latest on January 16th, uh, to inspect the general site conditions and the stormwater management basin. This is a request for a partial certificate of completion for lot six, now identified as number 176 Central Street. The Acknowledgement of permit responsibilities has been completed with the new purchasers and submitted to the <coughs> conservation office. And we, just like in our orders of conditions, yeah. we had a condition in the stormwater permit that if they sold the lot, the new buyers had to be informed about all the obligations while the stormwater permit is mm -hmm. in effect. And they were, <coughs> they were notified, or they acknowledged they were. My field <coughs> inspection verified that the work site has been rough graded the installation of erosion controls are showing at least four locations that are currently not capable of retaining flowed sediments. Uh, this is one of them. This is uh, just yeah. south of the driveway entrance. Um, all right, that's the basin, basin. Here's one right along the frontage where sediments have gone over and over topped. And that yeah. catch basin was totally obscured by the leaves. <coughs> I actually put them away, but I recommend it be uh, further cleaned out. Here's along the northern side. Um, we've got two distinct areas. This is the first area, and this is the second area, again, where sediments have overtopped the erosion control and gone outside the limit of work. Now, these aren't impacting regulated resource areas, but the erosion control should be returned to a functioning condition because as you can see, nothing's been stabilized because it hasn't been loamed. Um, and we certainly don't want further migration of sediments. And when it comes time for them to loam and seed, they'll have to take care of those float sediments. Take, they'll have to get that vegetation. Little, little yeah. Yeah. It's just field grass in that area anyway. This time of year, you can't do anything. Uh, so the catch basin in the public right of way was smothered in leaves and other debris, which I attempted to brush aside, but it needs proper attention to function as designed, especially in light of the coming rain event. The infiltration basin does not appear to be completed, and visual inspection... Come on. Oops. I guess I need to go reverse direction over here. Brent, where's our orange fence? <laughs> <laughs> I let them take it down. Did. Metal fence posts are still up there. They in the so well, you can stuff tell has been planted. There has been nothing up there. And there's no tracks. But. Right. Yeah. It's a steep slope. There's no reason for anyone to go there. But it caught my eye the other day. Won't lie. So I, I realize kind of kind of hard by these photographs. But I'm suggesting that they need to do a field survey, and you actually can kind of see that here. This is meant to be the overflow, mm -hmm. this riprap. And see, it drops here mm -hmm. and goes down, and then you go. So I actually asked, asked them to put in this erosion control to just tempor temporarily be sort of a, a side of the berm. But I don't believe they rough graded the, the top of the height of the berm correctly. Well, they'll probably do that as the as-built when they recede. Well, no. They did an as-built, and they didn't take any field elevations to confirm that. Um, I'll show you. So that's why I'm making a recommendation that we actually require them to do a field survey. Let's see if I can show you to you here. So this is what was submitted <clears throat> and their as-built plan shows the basin but doesn't just talks about uh, the bottom elevation and attests to the fact that it has the capacity. <coughs> they did not take any spot elevations to verify this 42 and a half. <coughs> Um, top top of berm elevation that's supposed to be and it's supposed to be uniform all around there. So as I was trying to point out in the picture, oops, where the heck did the picture go? Now I lost it. There it is. 
So in the picture, you can just see, just from looking at the street, you can see that it drops down mm -hmm. six or eight inches on this side towards the driveway, and then over here, it does the same thing. It drops down and goes around. That rip area, the berm should be just a few inches higher, because that should be where your overflow goes, mm -hmm. so that it won't erode the bank of the berm. So, you know, so you, sh you shouldn't be looking at that riprap stone being like a rumble strip. Right. <laughs> you know, it should be a depressed area to let the water seep the lowest level and go that direction. Even the rough grading, because you actually don't want loam <clears throat> to be the support structure of the walls of your berm. You want the subsoil to be the support structure. The loam is just supposed to be the top dressing so that you can have vegetative cover. It looks like they got a, they got a lot of grading to do, though. Well, yes. Yeah. Uh, and you got to break away the spring so that we get some of this stuff melted. Right. And so I just, I just wanted to you know, bring these things to the Commission's attention. Uh, why, we, why should we even give a partial certificate of compliance completion? Why not just require these things to be done? Yeah. you got to have vegetation over the septic anyways. Well, right. And they're going to do that. And they've made provisions to do it. I just, I'm just saying, you know, they've submitted an as-built, but I don't believe the as-built has the specificity <laughs> for this stormwater basin, which is an improvement important component, if not the only active component for stormwater management for this property. So what are we actually complying to? Well, again, we would, again, they have, they've developed and they've rough graded the site. Um, I don't believe we've got gutters and downspouts on here. They decided not to do that. Looks like some gutter on the garage. I'm like, no, maybe not. You know. Huge drop off off that house. <laughs> you know, yeah, those gutters. I don't want to make I suppose that ain't nothing. Yeah, no, I it didn't. Um, <laughs> it did not. It did not put gutters um, or downspots. They didn't do subsurface infiltration. So again, that makes the stormwater basin even more important because that's. I would definitely bring the stormwater basin to their attention because it's, right. it should be done sooner than later and you don't want a failure. Um, whether or not they can do it with this kind of weather, I have no idea. But I agree with Kurt. Let's wait and once everything gets seeded, we'll, you go through with a fine tooth comb and we'll do it once. <clears throat> it's not going to hold anything up, does it? I don't know. As far I as like not, closing? I do, I do not know. They've already, they've already did the closing. So let's keep let's keep control of this. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're not relinquishing control by the issuance of a partial. We're just acknowledging that some of the <coughs> regulated activities have been completed, and that certain ones aren't completed. It's up to it. It, to it helps that it helps them have a specificity in terms of the obligations from the sellers to the buyers. It helps them put a price on what on what they need to uh, consider they're liable for. Well, now, if they purchased that house, mm -hmm. obviously, I believe, I'm not, it's been a long, long time since I purchased a house, um, it, that's supposed to include hedges, uh, walkways, well, home. I don't, uh, see, I don't know. know. This is really uh -huh. unusual for one to have a closing prior to the commission considering issuance of some type of either partial or complete certificate of compliance because again I don't understand that's just the trolls down in the basement <laughs> making more leaks for you I don't I don't see a need to have a partial I, I prefer oh, I'll, I'll agree with my superior. did you say there was an ass bill yes there is yep okay. but it can't yep. be right I know but it doesn't seem like it's working right well because you're gonna add three inches onto the entire yard, and they're gonna take out some washouts that they've got, I mean. Right. I think that berm around the... <coughs> well again, see that needs to be verified. Yeah. See that's, and that's why I'm suspicious. All they say is infiltration, top is 41.8, bottom is 39 point, my glasses on, 39, 
and the riprap weir is at 41.4. Should be the lowest. Yeah. But see, there's no there's no indications of spot elevations having been taken around the top of the berm to provide verification that it's uniform. And that's you know I I've, I've usually got a fairly good eye for being able to look at things and tell whether something is at the same level as another thing. I look pretty good to me. I move that we continue this item to the next meeting. Okay. Certainly. Let, let them get the case. motion. You already did it. Second? Second. I'm fair. I've been looking at some of your earlier things there, Brett, on, on this particular lot, your slides with, mm -hmm. with the focal slot or whatever that stuff's called. Um, seems to me that, you know, that was compromised in several places, and maybe we got to do more requirements of hay bales in some situations where this kind of potential exists. Because, you know, those are much sturdier, they're taller, than, and you wouldn't have quite the same kind of problems. Yeah, but what you're right looking through. at, you're looking at a lack of maintenance. You're not looking at a failure of the product. You're looking at a lack of maintenance. Well, if the product isn't high enough yeah, with these kind of conditions, then it's, then it's, then it's, a, it doesn't matter. It's moot. But you're hitting, you know, Hay bales stand much higher than those socks do, and if they're installed properly, you might not have some of these problems. I mean, I'm not suggesting we do this every time. I'm just saying that if field conditions suggest this might be a problem, that we may want to do some. Well, well, there was no suggestion that there would be this type of problem because there wasn't any any large stockpiles or anything else there that would have made me uh, possibly recommend that they put silk fence in, which definitely has a height. Uh, characterization to it, and that's actually <coughs> what I prefer. Which actually slows down a lot of work, though. I mean, if well, you work with this with this stuff, you can pull it and then pull it right back. But I've got plenty of folks that just go put another one on yeah. top. Yeah. If you drive up where, that where hill, they where they see, because we have no control over how they rough grade the site, and then we have no control if they never bother <laughs> to look. And actually, one of those breaches I show you is where they did the water line connection. They breached it. They cut it. They chose not to put it back in place. You know, if, if anything, you might be better served by directing me to go find them. Because the permit says they're supposed to do a periodic inspection after a rain event, and they're supposed to repair and remove any retained sediments that are getting close to breaching the height of the sock. Have you, uh, is this the same contractor, all the houses, or everything? Well, you know, they made this a family affair. They've got three different, these, these six different lots are split amongst three different components of They're the family. They're using the same equipment, I noticed that. They, they're yeah. sharing the same site work guy and stuff, but yeah, there's, there's a son, there's an Maybe uncle. Maybe you should bring it to somebody's attention that, oh, by the way, this was brought up at our meeting. Um, well, I think you're going to get to their attention right away because you haven't even ruled to issue a partial. Okay. So I have a good. feeling you're going to grab their attention right off the bat. All right, good. <laughs> That'll work out then. Well, when they did and I'm really surprised that none of them are here tonight because you think they would have been here to protect their investment because this is probably going to have a negative impact on their recent transaction with these buyers. I okay. would imagine these buyers are not going to be happy that they may have just been saddled with a project, a problem. Mm. <clears throat> well, when we put a cease and desist on them for that cut through, well, that got their attention and they, they jumped right to it immediately and right. you know, hopefully right. that will happen again in this situation. Right. <clears throat> so, right. So, sorry, before we go too much further, who moved to continue this? Kurt? Kurt. You? I second it. And Dan second. All right, this next one I think is an easy one. <laughs> Waste a point I road. That's pretty cut and dry. Well, a little bit, except I'm going to ask for a bit of a memo here, and I'm going to. I don't normally do this, but I'm going to ask for your um, consideration on entertaining waiving uh, two ongoing conditions. And uh, specifically to 
Let me see, do I have some pictures from this? Well, specifically, he, he built a very modest single family home. Mm -hmm. And didn't decided not to put any gutters and downspouts, so we put a provision in that basically says if you don't do gutters and downspouts, you should do crushed stone infiltration trenches. They didn't do the crushed stone infiltration trenches. Now we've had all the rain from October. Basically, the site was all vegetated and everything way before <coughs> October. I've been actually trying to get them to finish things up, put in the posts with the no cut, you know disturbance zone signage on it. That was like the remaining thing. Everything else had been done. The site's all nicely vegetated, blah, blah, blah. And I noticed in my final inspection, they didn't do any crushed stone infiltration trenches. But I also noticed that their vegetation in their grass, which goes right up to the structure, has not been negatively impacted. Uh, and I think it's because the surface area of the house Too is small. very small, yeah. and also no, the no, distance no is not the same. It's not like it's taking a two-story drop. It's only taking a single-story drop. Does he have and a basement? No, I don't believe so. I think he's just got frost walls, I think. I th well, no, wait. No, there's a bulkhead door, so he must have a basement. I'm sorry. He Probably crawl space. Uh, most of well, the it, again, he's got a bulkhead, so I can't honestly tell. But <clears throat> but any anyway, the, the site, the only reason I'm asking for a waiver on this is functionally, it doesn't look like the crushed stone infiltration trench would have any difference. It looks like the vegetation, their grass is thick enough. And then the topography, it's got like 60, 60 plus feet to go before it even reaches mm -hmm. um, the uh, no cut, no disturbance line. No, I got no problem with that. That's, uh... so I, You'll be the one who has a problem for <coughs> so I did produce a memo on this. So, um, so the other, um, the ongoing conditions, which I believe should should be um, maintained, is our uh, restriction on pesticides and herbicides, uh, fertilizer being uh, uh, slow release, organic, low nitrogen content. The no cut, no disturbance zone, that that be maintained. The signage for the no cut, no disturbance zone be maintained. Uh, prohibition <coughs> on rock salt to be used for the purposes of ice control and the allowance for other ice preventative measures. But they've got a gravel drive, so they might not even worry about it. So, um, so anyway, if the commission would so choose, if you would um, waive the provision about the infiltration trench and the, the stormwater. Uh, it, that would be the only stormwater structure for the for the property. I'll make that motion. Excellent. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Mr. Machiro's uh, having to put a new septic into. Yes. Okay. Has he so been? So that's in? so that's. Well. All right. Better. I'll yep. Wait till we actually. Uh, is that that's the one that's next, right? That's the next. Uh, we can do that, that next. next. We got Farnham Road. Oh, why don't we do Farnham Road? Farnham Road's a nice positive Im one. Improper disposal of solid waste, man-made debris, causing a condition of potential pollution, filling a forested buffer zone, bordering vegetated wetlands. Wow, because so you sent me a picture, but I couldn't open it. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you get, uh, you get 
kids weren't coming over, so what can I do? Windmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And then you, you go click on it and it says which format you want to use. They said, no, I'm not telling that. So anyway, so, so actually the Raleigh police asked me to come over to 5 Farnham Road uh, because this, it's um, Wethersfield Street just before you get to the um, Georgetown okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Raleigh line, yeah. goes up to Brook. Okay. So it's kind of, a, it is a funny configured property, but um, the issue was that apparently someone was going in there, and there, you see there's just, there's all, well, no, they were using it, they were <coughs> dumping there, and I guess the, this had been taken over by Fannie Mae, been foreclosed on, and the gentleman who was in there, he apparently, they escorted him from the property, and a lot of his tenants were apparently also given um, rooming at the Raleigh Police Department for various infractions for short periods of time. So he didn't apparently have the best clientele. <laughs> if he was operating a B and B, it wasn't yeah. a very good one. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, as well as there had been a play set on the property, and in the course of them sending in their service people to uh, to rejuvenate the place and plant new shrubbery. They decided to take down the rotten play set with its slide and ladders, and they just throw it into the woods. So you can see the big green ladder, yeah. the slide right. is there, and then you can see the ladders that you know supported part of the, the swing play, play set or whatever. I can see that in the aerial photo, the pictometer we have for 2017. I can see it when it was out. Yeah, so I could, I could tell what this was. Um, so anyway, so I caught um, the only clue we had as to uh, who we might be able to talk to, and there's a little uh, dorm refrigerator type thing. There's another view of the slide and stuff, and they had stashed a bag of trash behind the uh, air conditioning unit there. Um, the only clue I had was the realtor's uh, sign at the front of the property, so I actually um, went and it had a website address on it so I went to the website and it had one of those little forms you fill out when I, which I think they intended that you fill this out if you were interested in the property I said well I'm not really interested in the property but I really think you should give me a call <laughs> because I've got a bunch of solid waste. Did you hear? The, oh yeah. yeah, called me immediately called me immediately, as well as within 48 hours, had contacted Fannie Mae and dispatched their field service people out there to oh. clean the stuff up. Excellent. And so yeah. I was invited uh, invited out there. I don't know if this is on a new picture or not. But basically, I just took a couple of confirming pictures of the woods <coughs> showing absolutely nothing foreign in the woods anymore. Excellent. Uh, and Actually, when I went out there and was walking with the realtor and the field service guy, I saw a couple of lolly columns that were so rusted they looked like the brown leaves. And I said, let's pick those up too. Do you need a hand? He goes, no, I got them. No problem. Sent me a picture later on of the two lolly columns in the back of his trailer going, going to dispose of them. So if the commission would so choose, I would recommend that you consider the matter closed. That they, um, they hopped right to the notice of violation and, and had it all cleaned up and you know rec rectified the issue. Go ahead, such a motion. So does that mean that we don't need to issue the notice and issue well, the I did issue the notice of the notice of violation letter is something that I can issue without. Okay. So yeah. so we're not <coughs> moving to an enforcement order where I need to bring it forward to the commission and then you need to consider if you confirm it and ratify it. We're not even, we okay. don't, I'm recommending that we don't even need to go to that step right. because they did, they removed all of the scattered solid waste and surface debris and the site has been restored so there's no impact to, uh, to the buffer zone or to the bordering vegetated wetlands that the stuff was getting close to. So, if you so choose. I'll move to consider the matter closed. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's good. Is that always fun? Good job. For the reasons it's specified. Always, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So
So who seconded this Dan. one? Dan? Dan. <laughs> okay. So, so. Geez, that's kind of good to know because uh, sometimes they get lost and, you know, people will hide behind the abstract uh, rules or whatever. Well, actually, sometimes it's really hard dealing with inenities such as Fannie Mae because they're off somewhere in the right. Midwest or something. They can hide. Um, not necessarily local, mm. um, and to, to have that type of response, I was very, um, very impressed, actually. Uh, I was just like, what do you need done? Okay, we'll do it. By mm. Farm Road on the corner of Wethersfield Street, or is that up the other end of Farm Road? <coughs> All right, well, this is a very strange lot. So it has frontage on Farnham. If you looked at it, you would consider that it's the second house in on Farnham, but it actually curves around and goes totally around the corner lot and then has 100 plus feet of frontage on Weathersfield Street. And why, there's sort of a ravine in there, and why this house and its driveway access is on Farnham, I don't really know, except maybe there was a soils issue or something, and that was that was where they had good soils for the septic system to be installed because it looks like there's more frontage on Weathersfield Street. Mm. And then the lot appears to just sort of be like field or lawn. If you didn't look at the assessor's map, you'd think it belonged <coughs> to the house on Weathersfield Street that has the last frontage before mm. Farnham. You'd think it was associated with that residence. I know, based on your description, I think I know... <laughs> The, uh, the owner of the property on Weathersfield Street on the east of that frontage, he's a former he's a former state cop, and he used yeah. to complain to me so about, here, here about some of the goings on behind his property. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now I know why. <laughs> so here, uh, oh, I see what you're talking can, about, can yeah. you see that? Yeah. It, it's very weird, a very <laughs> weird shaped lot, the configuration, <laughs> um, and. And this area here, it sort of goes a depression. And as it gets into the woods, it's a, it's a more well-pronounced ravine, and that's where the water is. That, down here, there's actually um, uh, bordering vegetated wetlands that have some seasonal inundation, <laughs> had some water in them. So the wetlands comes up in there, and then it throws the buffer zone all up, up into the woods where all that material was disposed in. Like I said, it's a strange, strange configuration for that lot. Um, so, so next gentleman, Mr. Maturis. Mr. Maturis on One Fifty Two Glen Glenn. Street. Oh, where is that? Phone? Is it going up Glen? Is that on the left side? I assume. Yeah, it's right before you get into Newbury. Yeah. Yep. Jennings, a fur trapper, used to live up that way. Oh, so you go around the corner? Yep. And it's just <coughs> before you get to where um, Weldon Farm Road comes in. Yes, right on the left. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, on the left-hand side. We had had um, the previous owner, and I guess they must have gotten foreclosed on too. Previous owner, we had had a couple little issues on the frontage. Let me see if I can get this. Mm. So, the old fur Travis place? No, it's next door. He, this guy he used to have a garage or something. Oh, yeah, he did. Yes. 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 Yeah, yes. he did a lot of automobile restoration. So, so, yep. So yep. there's one of one of the trees that they cut, uh, which is right at the driveway crossing, and there's where the culvert that goes under the driveway actually discharges, and this funny sort of this mound is actually asphalt that apparently, I don't know whether it was left over from roadway work or something, they apparently tried to use that to cement the crumbling head wall together. Um, because right. there's piece, well, yeah. yeah, but the pieces of concrete in there. Anyway, so where my shadow is being cast is actually some uh, fill, some gravel fill and stuff. But the um, big, so and this is some kind of, I don't know, ground cover thing here. This is actually all kind of, Loose fill. Um, that's that's the wetland. So, um, 
both sides of the driveway with wetlands. Yeah, both sides of the driveway there's wetlands, but this is the side where it yeah. goes up to where the residence has like a split level and a lower entrance way, <laughs> and it's also where uh, the septic comes out of the uh, property too. So you had directed them to put the erosion control up, so here's the lower gravel kind of an unofficial mm -hmm. gravel drive that goes up to that lower level entrance. You can see um, kind of a very rough, much, much sto a very rough stone it. retaining wall there. Um, but so this is looking up the slope and this is a stump that's actually been pulled out of the ground sitting there with the exposed root system. That used to all be treed. There was uh, maybe six or eight uh, really when I went there, I stopped trees. them from removing any more. Yeah. And I said, look, you just stabilize yeah, this and clean it. Exactly. So there's a couple cut stumps down. We're looking back down <coughs> to see the street. So there's some more, a few cut trees from there, but most of the cut trees are up here. So here you get kind of a sense of that, that lower level. You've got that little walkway there. This had a number of mature, I think they were pine oh, trees. They were all pine and they were yeah. all dead, yeah. 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 So. Was, so he's got to replace the this was the day that there. Brent left for vacation because it happens every year. <laughs> yeah. And as soon I'm as at I my go office out of town, and about 20 minutes place. into the morning I get a phone call from Debbie, Debbie and uh, see, a, a very excited neighbor called up and said that somebody was clearing all the trees in the neighborhood. Can you get right out there? By the time I got there, everything was dropped right on the spot and it was all done. But what a mess. I mean, in a the, the maturist, his father used to be the selectman at yeah. Newbury, and a nice kid. He was all part, he didn't know, and the contractor didn't know. Well, except that's funny, Iron Tree, tree service is the was one. Was it Iron Tree? Yes, <coughs> that's what I was told, it was Iron Tree. Because there was no green truck. been calling me. No, there was no green truck. Yeah, I don't know, so I don't know whether this is their, you know, the dark. Yeah, he was nice, the contractor was nice. <laughs> that's the dark it. web subsidiary of Iron Tree, the one that goes around <laughs> they must get the names the, on They the must trucks. get the bulletin when you go on vacation, that's all I so anyway, he has to replace the septic system. Whoops, I should have gone back there because you can actually see the green cover yeah. for I think, oh, uh, a yeah. tank that needs to be abandoned there. Um, so they've got to put a replacement septic system in. So it, it, it's funny because the engineer knew nothing about this. And he had contacted me to say, well, well, what type of application do I need to file with you? And I said, well, are you asking me what type of application? before the tree cutting or after the tree cutting? Because I can tell you it's going to be a notice of intent. <laughs> yeah. so goes, they did a good job though cleaning up. If you could have seen it that day, oh, oh my god, it was boring, man. Well, yeah, and all that disturbed bare dirt and everything. And just, you know, because I don't think there was any ground vegetation anyway, so it was all pine trees and it's all the red needles. Because <coughs> I was walking around it and it was just right. inches thick. You can see it right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can see it right there. This is the upper part of the driveway where the driver goes up to the what we second level or our main level of the residence. Yeah, so he's rehabbing it and everything. So, yeah, when I met him out there, he just says, you know, tell me what I need to do. Yeah. I mean, he was actually so deferential that I was kind of like, well, you know, it's like I need to read you your rights. <laughs> you <know? laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, I know we're going to fix this or whatever, but I need to tell you your, your options here. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, as long as the commission is comfortable, I, you know, if you want me to do an enforcement order, we could legitimately issue an enforcement order, but where the new owner is amenable to just wrapping up this disturbance in the buffer zone into a notice of intent and then we'll address whatever filling and stuff is going on by the driveway culvert outlet there to right. get that you know that's what I said to him I said well first off get a wetland scientist because we need a new delineation and secondly you've got to do something because your outlet to your culvert going under your driveway entrance is like only at 40% capacity, the rest of it's all full of gravel. And it's an old iron pipe. And like I said, the head wall there is actually falling apart and that asphalt was sort of used to try and cement it together, but it's still just crumbling and whatever. So if you're comfortable with this getting wrapped into their notice of intent for a 
septic system replacement. I think that's. I would think so. He makes seems a lot, a very makes nice a lot of sense yeah. to proceed yeah. that way. So. Do we hear such a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. So who moved that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Kudos to the neighbor for letting us know. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it was all done. I mean, I hate to go out there with half done because then what do you do now? Because they were dead trees. Right, right. Well, again, they put up the erosion control and stuff. So but that makes me wonder. I ain't, I ain't tree must have said he's out of town, so we're just going to drop everything. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't an hour and I was there. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's pretty evident that there are wetlands there, so I don't know. Okay, um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. Okay, at 9.50 p.m. Very good.